Hotel, the largest hotel in Dallas, the biggest hotel in Dallas. October the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th. And somebody give me the address. <laughs> rooms but this room is the most amazing looking room that you ever saw in your life you know why because where I'm having the service is in the heart of Dallas where you can look over all of Dallas from the room saints let me tell you something All of Dallas can be seen while you're in the room. You can look at the city. Well, Dallas is so big, so not all of Dallas. <laughs> but Saints, the, 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 now Saints, it cost me some money, but that's all right. <laughs> it's, it's worth the investment. Right? We saw it into the gospel. <laughs> and I, I hold the Lord's work in high regard. Now, saints, look at this. You'll be able to look out and see. Huh? You'll be, be able to look out and see Dallas, Texas, downtown. Now, saints, what the Lord was talking to me about was how I'm doing this in the heart of the city. And what the Holy Spirit was telling me was for me to release his power and his fire in the heart of Texas, the heart of downtown Dallas, Texas, This power is going to saturate the region. So, with this conference, it even showed like Jesus taking back Texas. Because how, how, how I'm positioning the heart and the glory of God going to be descending right there in the heart of Dallas, Texas. Is proof that Jesus is taking back Texas. Because once he releases his spirit all over, and we in the middle, it's spread abroad. It's beautiful. Saints, this room bigger than some of y'all house. This this room bigger than some of y'all uh, your home. No cap.
Now, I, I don't want to stay right here too long, but let's touch this real quick. Look at this here. All right. 
Okay, uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse um, 22. Um, Deuteronomy 18, 22. Look what it said. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follows not or it doesn't come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken, but the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Now, saints, the Lord was ministering to me about this. Because I, I had just saw it and the Lord was speaking to me about it. Because the last text is a very powerful text. It says, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Which shows you that a prophet is made and God does want you to be afraid of him. But it's saying if the prophet's still growing, it's not the time for him to be honored with that level of fear. This powerful stuff, man. No, no, no. You, you, know, you know how I look at the word through wisdom and I unlock the codes. Look what it says. Thou shalt not be afraid of him, which shows that God does want you to be afraid of him. If he grows into the fullness of who he's supposed to be as a prophet sent to you, not just any prophet. Because you can't serve two prophets. You can't, you can't have two prophets. It's going to cause confusion because God teaches at the level of receptivity. Remember that. That's a wisdom door number one. God teaches at the level of receptivity. Number two, God teaches at the level of hunger. Number two, God teaches at the level of hunger. One prophet may get to a level with God and decide, all right, I done arrived. Hallelujah. Let me plant myself here. Then there's other prophets that are diligent and they keep on going and going and going. And, and see, those type of prophets are the ones that get fought the most. The prophet that is con continually growing will be continually fought. Because the growth is a revelation of dominion over territory. You caught that? Growth is a revelation of dominion over territory. Wisdom door. Number three. Wisdom door number three. Growth is dominion over territory. It's a revelation of dominion over territory. Once you start growing, the Bible said Jesus increased. Luke 2.52, he increased in wisdom. It was a revelation that now he was increasing in dominion. So now you see that the Pharisees and the people in the land started plotting against him stronger. You, you understand? Now he became a target. Now everybody was coming to meet and say, oh, look what he said. Uh, he said, thou sins are forgiven you. Because now he's a dominator in, in, in a more intense delivery. Uh, um, watch this. If you take notes, write this down. Um, the increase of wisdom births aggressive dominion. See, let me just tell you this. That's why a lot of people, you got to know what you're working with. If you, if you, um, if you meet somebody that has increased in wisdom, their dominion is aggressive. So if like disorder come, like they'll start roaring. Like, see, I, I only bark if somebody on my turf talking. You don't understand? On my turf. You talk on the other turf. That's you. you can do that. But if you come on my turf, <laughs> if my name get involved, then I'm a bark. Because cause, cause the aggressive dominion is increased. Wisdom being manifested. See, um, when Jesus was 12, right? You see his mother tell him, you know, who you at, boy? Come on. You see, he submit to her. But when his wisdom increased, 
Then he started talking like this. If you love your mother and father more than me, you're not worthy of me. Uh-oh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. ho. Don't get back slapped, Jesus. Psych. If she, get, if, he, if she try to lift up that hand, it might not make it. <laughs> like the matrix. <laughs> might not make it. You, you <laughs> Say, well, why, why have you tried to slap Jesus? You just, what the? All right, I repent. I'm sorry. I'm not going to slap you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. <laughs> Ain't that crazy though? You try to slap Jesus, he just... and then you try to you try to fix it, Tulsa. <laughs> you trying to play it off because you tried to slap him and everybody saw it. Tulsa, Jesus, you. You try to play up now, Mary. We saw you try to slap him. Don't try to electric slide this out. Don't try. <laughs> Don't try to electric slide this out. No, you're not getting out of this one. We saw you try to slap him. We saw your hand go up. You was aggressive. Your head, your head vein was popping. Somebody should take a screenshot of you when you're dealing with your children. You done turn into Shrek. <laughs> somebody need to screenshot you when somebody need to screenshot you when you, when you when you're dealing with your children. You ain't gonna get married no time soon. <laughs> now, okay, it said thou shalt be afraid of him. So saints, when God put a prophet over your life, you're supposed to be afraid of them. And see, that how you see how the fear of God, there's a, there's a puzzle to the fear of God. And the puzzle to the fear of God is that you have to learn how to manifest the fear of God in your life. Like how? How? Because saints, people would be living a gangster lifestyle and you talk to them, they say, well, the only thing I fear is God. They don't know what they're saying. If all you feared was God, you wouldn't be living that type of lifestyle. You ever heard somebody tell us, man, I, don't, I ain't scared of nothing, man. The only thing I fear is God. But they live in a life that God does not take any pleasure in. So they deceive in themselves. Like you can, you can see somebody act reckless. They, they get into a lot of trouble with the law. They get into a lot of trouble with different type of avenues. And then they say, you know, man, all I fear is God, man. I don't fear nothing else but God. How? How? Because if all, if all I fear is God, Everything that I'm going to do is going to bounce back to that fear of God. So it's going to cause you to live a life that's free from sin, but free from poverty as well. You understand? So you're going to have a life that's free from sin, but free from poverty as well. See, saints, watch this here. Let me just tell you this. If you fear God, you'll let him take over your finances. If you fear him. See, saints, why did Proverbs 22, 4 say that the fear of God, um, and talk about how the fear of God is what uh, causes riches, honor, and life. If the fear of God is there, it says it's going to cause riches, honor, and life. So why is God giving me riches if I'm not obeying him financially? So the fear of God make me so. The fear of God anoints me to sow from the glory realm. The fear of God anoints me to become a supernatural, cheerful giver. The fear of God makes my hand Hate eating the seed. 
The fear of God make me hate the idea of not sowing or can't be able to sow. See, um, you know, you can get uh, you can get uh, frustrated off of other stuff, you know. Some people may claim, you know, I'm a little frustrated because I'm not. Um, okay, we're dealing with real life here. So I'm, I'm going to get real strong and raw. <laughs> raw doggy. No, I can't say that. Some of y'all ain't say it. Um, I'm going to get raw uh, turtle. Raw bird. All right. Big bird. Uh, big drip. Uh, I'm going to start dealing with something real strong. Uh, some people say I get, you know, I get frustrated because, um, you know, I'm not, you know, uh, I ain't had no coffee today. That's number one. Uh, then uh, there's other people say, you know, I'm frustrated today because, uh, you know, ain't nobody giving me a compliment. All right, number two. All right, number three, you know, some people say, you know, I ain't, I'm getting a little frustrated because, you know, it's a little hot outside. Uh, ooh, there it is, number three. And one, you better not say nothing. I'm going to slap you with cheeseburger. Uh, number four, uh, keep it pure. Sit down. Uh, number four. <laughs> number four, uh, somebody might say, you know, I'm a little frustrated because I'm waiting on God to change my season, but he ain't changed the season yet. And number four, sight. All right. Then number five, when you get to number five, say it might be a little frustrated because I'm trying to focus in on prayer and people keep on interrupting me. All right, number five, fine. Number six, I'm trying to ask God for an answer. I really can't hear him. I don't know why I can't hear his voice. Number six, that's why people say they're frustrated. All right, number seven, last but not least, this is the last one. Number seven, because it is finished. Seven is number completion. I'm about to complete this whole thing into number seven. Number seven, people will say, I'm frustrated because I had no sex. See, that's the last one. Don't talk about no sausage. Somebody get, get out of here. Um, see, look, the last seven one, the last seven one, the last seven one, huh? Huh? The last seven one. Is, 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 is some, some. Now, watch this here. Let me just tell you this. See, all those other stuff is <laughs> fleshly. You know, it's all that other stuff got to do with the flesh. You hot, you know, dot, dot, all that other stuff. That's all flesh. But watch this. When you in the spirit, and you in the fear of God, you get frustrated when you can't sow. Or when you feel restrained in your sowing. No, no, watch this here. When you in the fear of God, you get angry when thoughts start coming to you that it seems like it's affecting your mood, your life, your, 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 your momentum. I'm showing you how Satan got a frustration that he gives you and Jesus got a frustration that he gives you. And when you're in wisdom, you're discerning which frustration that you must entertain. And, and what's, which frustration is not worthy? Which frustration to entertain? Because the frustration that Jesus is giving you is to prosper you and bring you higher. The frustration Satan giving you is to demote you and bring you lower. Sons, daughters, watch this. In your life, weigh out which frustration is from God. Because there's a frustration where God is upgrading your life. There's a frustration that Satan is using to downgrade your life. One frustration comes from love. That's from Jesus. The other frustration comes from jealousy. That's from the serpent. One frustration will break favor and the other frustration will make favor. See, I'm going to show you something. The first woman, Adam, right? Her name was Adam. Her frustration 
of thinking that God was withholding her from her the knowledge of what could make her a God made her say, bump this. Give me this daggone tree from the knowledge of good and evil. I know he said no evil, but listen, you done convinced me, serpent. Come on. Give it to me now. Give it to me now. Now give it to me now. Throw around this serpent. And then the man had to be convinced the same thing. Watch this. He forgot that God had told him, let us make man in our image and likeness. He forgot all of that. He forgot all that the Lord had already said to him. And he got deceived. You saw that? So now, both of them were stripped into wrong frustration. Because what the serpent did was trick them into believing that the Lord was withholding something from them that they needed to enjoy. You see that? Saints, one of, the, one of Satan's uh, biggest deceptions to your life is he'll tell you that the Lord is withholding something from you that you need to enjoy. Where really the Lord is just planning a surprise party to give you everything that you enjoy at the appointed time. That's one, Saints, if you ever see somebody that belongs to God ever get depressed or discouraged, Satan is telling them that what they dreamed about will never happen. But who the, is Satan? <laughs> you can have whatever you like. You can have whatever you like. Money! Who is Satan? His verdict is not powerful. His verdict has no authoritative manifestation power at all. He don't control anything in your life, for your life. Let me boast in my son Ramirez real quick. Ramirez, he overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of his testimony. And I'll say this for everybody for the rest of my life. I pray that the blood of Jesus will continue to prevail in your life that Satan will never touch you. Jesus said, no man pluck you out my hands. No man. You notice Jesus didn't say no devil. So, so wait, Jesus. Why did you say no man will pluck you out my hands? No man, because man be the devil. It's man that come talk to you and make you miss God. It's man that come tell you stuff to get you out of the will of God, mentally, emotionally, and physically, financially. It's men. It's people with a mouth. It's not just your spirit, man. It's, it's, it's people that walk around and you can see them with your own eyes. He said, no man will pluck you out of my hands. My son Ramirez, my son sold a thousand dollar seed. He sold a thousand dollar seed. And he got approved for his, 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 uh, he got approved. He got a favor. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. When men sow, when men sow, see, see, women, women catch on to sowing real quick. Cause, cause, cause woman, 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 they step into fantasy quicker. No, I know what I'm talking about. No, I know what I'm talking about. If you if you if you if you don't understand what I'm talking about, I know what I'm talking about. A woman step into fantasy quicker. They fantasize about the will of God quicker sometimes than men. 
Sometimes men too much in their ego, they don't know how to fantasize about what God's saying. Woman, woman more so fantasize quicker because God created woman to be uh, pleasure releasers. He created woman to bring peace, inspiration, and organization. So for you to organize, for you to bring peace, and for you to bring pleasure, your mind has to be in the realm of fantasy. So, so when women become divine and the Holy Ghost take over a woman, now, now the Holy Ghost intercept that fantasy realm. And now the Holy Ghost start, start moving in that. See, I'm going to say this to you. Do you know that woman with the alabaster box? She fantasized about pinning that alabaster box on Jesus' head. <laughs> You, I said the woman with the alabaster box, she fantasized about doing that. That's why when she was doing it, nobody could stop her. See, she didn't care how stupid she looked in front of Simon. She didn't care about how stupid she looked in front of the disciples because when she fantasized it, she was wise. Uh, when she fantasized that she was in the spirit, when she fantasized that she was taken over by, by surrender and honor and submission. So, so when she was in the act, everybody was saying, and she was in the act. And she was in the act. 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 What if somebody told her that Jesus' feet were smelling funny? What if somebody told her that Jesus had a big old corn on the top of his foot right there, the, the, the one at the top, the left one? What if somebody told her that he got big old corn? What if somebody told him, what, what if, what if she ain't let none that they were saying about her feet or him or him or none of them bother what she done fantasized in her mind? See, the anointing of fantasy is powerful. Don't let Satan have it. Don't let Satan have it. Because God has a fantasy anointing that he gives to those that serve him and love him and fear him and walk with him and do whatever he say and follow his word and follow his spirit. He got a fantasy realm that he'll release on you that your mind will go into a debt. Ah! It'll go into a realm that other people won't be able to understand and it'll break every single tradition a fantasy realm where people will say nah that's not God telling you that that is God telling me that I'm in a realm with him that you not gonna understand cause it only take worshiper it gonna take somebody that done lost their life lost their image and lost everything for Jesus and, and watch when, when that fantasy realm come on you the Holy Ghost will start speaking to you in an unknown tongue why because these tongues, this conversation is not a conversation that the average man can walk in. It's not a conversation that the average woman could step into. So it's unknown because it's reserved and hidden away for those that are in the secret place of the Most High God. Everything that became about Jesus. So See, there was a woman with two mites, right? There was a woman with two mites. Let me tell you something. She had two mites, huh? But though she had the lowest amount of money in the room, her bank account couldn't stop her, her sewing fantasy. See, uh, see, she had a fantasy that she was going to sow this into Jesus while he was in the room. So even though people would tell her, girl, that's your last money. What you doing? You, you're not going to shoot. What you doing with that? She said, no, 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 no. I'm a soul. Saints, don't think that those debt demons weren't talking to that woman. Say, how you going to pay your debt, girl? How you gonna pay your debt, girl? 
How you gonna pay your debt, girl? How you gonna pay your debt, girl? Don't think another demon was telling you, weave look like a rat. Your weave look like a rat. Your weave look like a rat. Your weave look like a rat. Don't think the other demon was telling her that the landlord wasn't going to pit her out. The other demon was telling her, how are you going to pay for groceries? How are you going to get back home? What you going to live off of for the rest of the week? But because the anointing of fantasy is on her to honor Jesus. She not even bothered. Look what she do. She come up with her two mites. Pit the two mites down. She pit the two mites right there. It didn't bother her one bit because the anointing of fantasy is on her. See, see that? The anointing of fantasy is why Elisha told Elijah, wherever you go, I'm going. Because he done fantasized in his mind. I ain't going to never betray you. I don't care if they tell me that you 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 is a drunk art Elijah. I don't care if they tell me that, that you going the wrong way. If you going to hell, well, blessed be God. I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm going to hell with you. Cause if I make my bed in hell, just like David said, the Lord is there. So so I'm I'm falling. I'm telling you the mindset that Elisha had. No, blessed be God, we all black. We ain't going to hell. Shoot. <laughs> And shoot, you go hell by yourself. I don't like heat right now. Shoot. My room be cold, blessed be his name. Not super cold now, not super soaker. I ain't talking about no super cold, because some, some, some niggas, they, how they got their room up there cold, they, that, that is treacherous. You can't do nothing for them in that coldness. Because when you get out the sheet, you done freezing. Ooh. See, I'm not talking about that. Listen to what I'm telling you. Let me clean up. Let me fix it. And let me wash it down. Um, the transquisities of the statement that I just made is this. Uh, the transquisities. Um, uh, the complex of the statement and the text that I just spoke to you from is uh, uh, here's what I want to tell you. Uh, we don't do good with heat now. All right. So if we don't do good with heat right now, all right. And, and, and when you get hot, it's like there's a demon that start talking through your mouth. Um, there's a demon that start talking through your mouth <laughs> because you won't cuss everybody out because the heat is getting to your, 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 your stem cells. You have heard stem cell research where the heat is researching all your stems. And while it's researching your stems, you, you can't stay right there in silence. There's a, there's a boisterous reaction that erupts in the midst of the volcano of the heat. And while it's ro roaming all around you and just uh, 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 sweatiness is not of God. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, readiness is, but sweatiness not. Um, now, I'm going to tell you this. You can't wear no daggone makeup and the heat is out. Because <laughs> by the time it's over, the, you're going to look like you up there crying. And it's not that you crying. Let me tell you something. What happened? No, no, just, just listen to me. Shut, 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 shut. <laughs> shut, shut, shut. What happened is, is not, is not, shut, shut. <laughs> it's not that you was crying is just because the sweat you in the heat and the heat is too much is 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 evaporating off oh. <laughs> it's, it's evaporating all oh, that you done put on your faces is now let me tell you something that statement that I made let's we not going 
Ain't nobody got no time for that. Saints, let me tell you this. The Lord let you get frustrated when you get hot. How many of y'all ever been in a car in the back seat? See, that's why I don't sit in the back seat. Let me give you a secret. Let me give you some back seat ology. When you sit in the back seat, let me give you the secret. The wind don't hit your face fast enough. <laughs> let me, no, let me, let me, no, no, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me tell you. Let me, let me tell you, little son, son. Let me, let me school you. Let me school you, young buck. Let me school you, young buck. You a young buck. Let me school you, young buck. Let me tell you something. When you sit in the back seat. The wind don't want to travel fast enough to get to you. So you be driving and you just happy go lucky. And then all of a sudden you feel like you're dying. And all of a sudden your hand just start reaching. You trying to put the window down in the back. <laughs> and, and you're not trying to be disrespectful or nothing. But you just realize that you might got about two sins that ain't forgiven. And if you do die in the midst of this. That it is not going to work out for your greater good, for the greater good, for the greater good. Shop, 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 shop. Now, listen. So here's what happened. I don't, you know, I get chauffeur around. <laughs> I get chauffeur around and stuff like that. I'm be chauffeur around in my meeting and stuff like that, right? Shop, 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 shop. So I'm be chauffeur around in my meeting. But <laughs> this one I want you to get. <laughs> this one I want you to catch. <laughs> this one I want you to catch. Catch this. <sighs> this one I want you to catch. When you in the back seat, let me give you some back seat allergy. This is what you gotta do. You gotta make sure that you get cold first. <laughs> You got to make sure that you get cold first before you sit in the back seat. Let me give you some back seat allergy. If you sit in the back seat in the process of, of you already being overheated, you're going to pass out possibly over 90% of the time if you're not careful. Because what happened is your body already at the pace. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Somebody, listen, you are already at the pace where you are already at a high percentage, a high voltage. It's high volt, voltage. Shout, 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 shout. Let me finish. Shut up, shout, shout. You are already at a high voltage. So look what happened. His, his, his was really going on. So when you had a high voltage, <laughs> when you step into the back seat, you are already in the proximity of overheatedness and faintedness. So when you're driving, while you're in that state, eventually there's going to be a, 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 a anger that's going to come upon thee. And when the anger come upon thee, you're not mad at nobody. You're just mad because... The voltage too high and, and you overcharged. But but at the same time, while you overcharge, the 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 feeling the, the feeling calities, the feeling calities, the feeling calities, shout, shout, shout. The feeling cal shout. The feeling shout shout shout. The feeling calities. Is going to be felt through you. Because let, let me tell you something. I, I, learned, I learned it. Because one time I sat in the back seat in my own car. And when I sat in the back seat. All of a sudden I started reaching for stuff. <laughs> uh, you start reaching for stuff. I, no I was in the back seat. In my own car. And <laughs> your feet start moving. I was back to tuss. And when 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 I experienced that type of 
activity going on back there. I said, doggone it, I can't. This, this no wonder. No wonder people that don't want to get inside the cop car. See, I found out the mystery. I found out why he don't want the cop. The cops to arrest him and put the cuffs on him. I found out that he's not even worried about going to jail. Because most, most niggas like going to jail. This, I found out that he's not even worried about going to jail. Look at, I found out that he don't want to be in the back seat because he might suffocate because the oxygen is, is already not going to go to the back seat. But now it got a glass back there. You see that? It got a glass. So, so now is he extra harder because now the wind are already rebellious and don't want to cooperate. But now I got to go through a glass. So if you can't handle heat right now, why would you want to go to hell? Why? Why would you want to go to hell? Because, see, the Lord be letting you feel it right now. You, you get frustrated you, you, when you're in the heat. Well, imagine being in hell fire for all eternity. That heat going to be on you nonstop with no air, no relief, no, no deliverance. So, saints, let me just tell you that. That is worse than any act of humility that God will call on you to do in this life. Say, so let me tell you this. I'd rather live the rest of my life not having my way than to have my way and not have my way for the rest of eternity. You caught that? You got that? I'd rather live my whole life not having my way than to have my way and live all eternity not having my way. No saints, that's what got me tied into Jesus. That's, that's what got me plugged in. Because I got the revelation. I, I want him to have his way with me. You understand? So when I got the revelation, I want him to have his way with me. See, now, all that other stuff that Satan will throw, he'll say, nah, I, I, I'll go through that any day. No, nah, he'll fight me any day. I, I don't I don't bother about that. I'd rather that than eternity. See, saints, you got to remember that when you're walking with Jesus. Because this walk is not for, for, for the faint-hearted, the weak-hearted. Saints, let me just tell you something. It's not that I don't go through stuff. I go through stuff, but you're, you don't hear me glorify Satan. See, if I keep talking about the stuff, the fiery darts, I'm giving glory to Satan involuntarily. Meaning I'm not volunteering to give him uh, glory, but I'm giving him glory because of my lack of understanding. So I'm giving him glory by talking about what he's doing. See, watch this. How do you give God glory when you're talking? How do you give him praise? You talk about what he's doing. So if, if I'm in conversation about what the devil is doing all the time, I become a worshiper of Satan without my own knowledge knowing it. So, so, so there's a lot of children of God that give glory to Satan and then he fights their health. And, and he can sit on the health because the same way in Psalm chapter 22, it said that Jesus is enthroned in the praises of his people. He sit in their praises. So if I start praising Satan and I start talking about what Satan do, I give him the right to sit on me. You don't want to say in the cell on you. You want some. Let me say, let me finish. Shop, 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 shop. Let me finish. Shop.
shop. Listen, um, let, let, let me say this here. Uh, Saul shot, shot. Saul, if you're not careful with how you talk, you can create a throne for Satan to reign in your life. That's what happens when you speak death. Write, write this down. When you speak death, you create a throne for Satan to rule and reign in your life. When you start speaking death, you create a throne for Satan. And Satan start reigning. See, saints... There's a lot of people, right, they speak bad against money. They created a throne for Satan. So now Satan dominates their money. But it was them that created the throne for Satan. Because see, if I'm talking about what he does, I'm manifesting who he is. That's heavy. If I talk about what Satan does, I'm manifesting who he is in my life. Jesus. Don't create a throne of Satan in your life because your mind, your words. Your mind can fall in the level. Your mind will fall in love with the devil if you keep on thinking about what he's doing. You know that, right? Watch this. Let me just tell you this. When you love somebody, you do whatever they command you to do. Now watch this. Some people say, I don't love the devil, but watch this. If you keep talking about the devil, right? And the devil tell you, I want you to get drunk today. And you start drinking, da, da, da. Guess what? You're in love with the devil. Now you're not going to say it verbally because anybody will look at you and say, girl, you crazy. You're in love with the devil. Boy, you crazy. You're in love with the devil. But what happens is you're doing whatsoever he commands you. So in that state, you're in love with whoever you're obeying. Watch this. Let's go another route because that, that was small, small. If you worry, and Jesus told you, worry not, fear not. Don't worry about tomorrow. And you worried. Guess what? you manifesting your love for Satan. This apostolic. If, if the Lord told you not to worry, you worrying. You manifest in love to the devil. You worship, worry is worship to the devil. Oh my God, that's powerful stuff. Because you often heard me talk about how worry is in worship. But worry is the worship of the devil. So when you worrying, you worshiping the God of this age. See, Watch this. Peter walking on water because he worshiped Jesus. So why did he start sinking? He worshiping someone else. If he was worshiping Jesus, he would have never started sinking. Because it was worshiping Jesus that made him stand on the water. So why, can't, why is he losing his ability to do what worshiping Jesus created? I'm going to say this one more time. Why is he losing the ability to do what worshiping Jesus created? Because he worships, he worships his son else. When you worship the devil, you lose your ability for divine functionality. Now you can regain it back. It's called restoration. He restores my soul. 
That's Psalm 23. Why? Because when he restores your soul, you get it right back. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, so you get it right back. Now, you function right back into the same vein that you was in before. See, wealth grace is a reward for not worshiping the devil in your mind. Wealth grace is a reward. It's the prophet's reward for not worshiping the devil in your mind. Wealth grace. See? When you step into wealth grace, the devil can't stop you. Because let me just tell you something. When the wealth anointing is on you, it's not that you just anointed for money. You anointed for money, but you anointed for wisdom. So in the midst of you being anointed for wisdom, that means that you got the power not to ever, ever trespass against God in your mind. See, This is an anointing for you never ever to follow Satan again. Wealth grace. Because when you got wealth grace, this is a high glory level, a high glory realm. So how you got here? Because you submitted to the Lord. You let him take over every area of your life, your mind, your will, your emotions, and your money. So once you done got Wealth grace on you is a sign that you done passed the test of letting Jesus become the dominator over you. So here's what happens, sons and daughters. Now you got the anointing over money, but you got the anointing over memory. He can't mess with your mind no more. Saints, you know why I talk like I talk? Because the devil ain't got no power over me. Let me tell you something. Do you know uh, this is not built off of conditions? Because see, I thought like this and I operated like this when the money wasn't there. I operated and talked like this when I was a virgin. Saints, you ever seen people, old, old people, this is how they get up. I ain't gonna play with it, but listen. You ever seen old people try to get up out the chair? This is how they do. Maybe up in the chair like this. <laughs> Saints, you ever had a granddaddy that cussed you out that he couldn't get up? And you was like, I'm not helping you. Uh-uh. Get up yourself. Now, I know that you're, you got new kneecaps and the cartilage not right. I'm still ain't going to do it for you. Uh, uh, no. Oh, no. Hold on now. Uh, <laughs> they done flew. <laughs> they, done, they done flew. They done flew all the way down. <laughs> They done flew all the way down the street. You ain't stop them. <laughs> People on their phone talk to uh, I see Elder Robinson running down the street. Um, I think he's going crazy. Call, uh, I'm calling for a case. Can you send some officers out here? Because he's running down the street. 
Damn, man, I had my pocket squares just looking right until they don't want to pop out. The pocket squares like something else you can't control it, Papa. Let me tell you something. It was, it was right. This man tried to, I just bought the pocket square. This man tried to, he tried to sell me the pocket squares. They, they always trying to work deals. Talk to, well, listen, I got I got something to do. Uh, 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 huh? I can't hear you. You're going to have to speak in English, bro. You speak in Arabian, huh? I'm not from Iraq. <laughs> no disrespect. I'm not from Iraq. I can't, I can't. You got, you going, I got racks. Now I got racks, but I'm not from Iraq. Well, there's a difference. You see that? Well, I, no, I got racks, but I'm not from Iraq. So, you, know, you listen, you got to, you got to, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, listen, I got I got something you make here. It, 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 it helped you with your, your, your pocket squares. It, you zip it on and the stuff. And it, I took the thing. I said, look, brother, look. Bam, 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 bam. I said, listen, I don't need that pocket square thing. So he said, if you're not careful, people try to sell you stuff. They try and work. They try and work the money price off of you, and you don't even need the stuff. But you can do the same thing that they try. To, <laughs> you can do the same thing that they try to tell you that that the thing gonna do, if you're not careful. Will mess you up, trick you. Wealth grace mean that you done passed over. Wealth grace mean that the power of God is now on you so that you can rule and reign in every area of your life. Wealth grace. Wealth grace mean that the power of the Holy Ghost is sitting on you now so that no demon can have any rulership over you. Wealth grace. Wealth grace. Wealth grace. Look out for me. Look out for me. Wealth grace. Look out for me. Some of y'all don't go to sleep. I, I feel I feel I feel like I'ma do another broadcast. Look out for me. Makarapa sorebe. Nerobo socorramanti.